I was fortunate enough to get a free copy of Ballsy World Cup 2020 from the devs who asked me to do a quick review for them. I will say it didn't hit a home run for me because I have high expectations for sports games. But jump onto the pitch with me, let's take a look, and you can decide for yourself if this is more of your thing than it is mine. Shall we begin? Welcome to an extremely simplified World Cup top-down early console era gameplay. But this is not your normal football or soccer competition, right? This is an iteration you're going to find with without any refs, fouls, yellow or red cards, balls can't go out of bounds. Properly decent wants you to ram straight into the other players, beat them up, knock them down, steal the ball, and score as many goals as you can. I'm going to be really upfront about this. I would not have picked up Ballsy World Cup 2020 if I was browsing by it in Steam or something. I just saw it on sale for 250 because I was looking up the store page before doing this review, but it will traditionally run you around $5. Is it worth your $5? Well, let's look at some of the game modes, mechanics, and gameplay in general. Perhaps this is more your style than mine. First off, we can take a look at the title screen, game modes, controller options. This has the old school looks, but it has our modern needs with button remapping and system changes. We're given a quick play option, so you can just jump into a game and it's going to pick your random teams, as well as the World Cup mode. I'm happy to say that if you don't have the time to go through the entire World Cup, you can return without losing your progress. You can quit and save and just jump back in. But realistically, I think each match took me maybe around 15 minutes to complete. I did two full World Cup run-throughs, and I think they were about six matches each. Losing in the finals the first time my, on my first attempt, and then on the second attempt, learning the techniques, completely dominated everyone, and it made it pretty simple, and I won comfortably. So when you're looking at the mechanics of the game throughout the match, people are going to have a burst, which they can slam straight into you. You can do the same to them, knocking the ball away. Traditional tackles that you're used to in all the other games are really only dedicated to the goalie box. Goalies are going to make a lot of really poor, stupid decisions in this game. You're going to bang your head against the wall like, what the hell is that guy doing? But the defense, on the other hand, the defenders are going to come in and they're going to make some of the most ridiculously amazing slide tackles from really far away, perfectly timed as if they know that you're hitting that button to shoot. So it's basically like juke, juke, juke. Juke again, then shoot. Dribbling is really easy. Passing is decent, not perfect. Switching between players I thought was an absolute pain in the butt. The game isn't going to take you to the closest player next to the ball, but instead it's going to shoot you wherever the heck it wants. You know, most of these football, soccer games, FIFA, you know, it's going to take you to the closest player to that ball. Ballsy does not do that. Many times it made absolutely no sense where my cursor ended up. You know, at first, the, the refs, the no refs being there was, was fun, and you could slam into people, and it, sure, it's fun. Uh, it keeps the game moving along really well. Um, there's no out of bounds, so again, the clock's going to keep ticking, except for scores. Like, nobody gets hurt. There's nothing there that slows down the game. We're offered quite a few different countries to choose from. I think there's about 20. The rankings, for the most part, they have stars on them. I did notice that the difficulty between those teams were slightly different, not exponentially different between a three-star team and a five-star team, but there was some slight variation there. Defenders, midfielders, and attackers are all going to move the same, have the same speed, have the same abilities. There's no real differentiation there. And at the end of the day, you're going to have to decide if you really want a very simplified football game that won't take you much time or thought, really? Is it a game that maybe you just sit back and relax and you win the World Cup a thousand times? Because look, if you really want to do that, you could play this game for months and win and win and win and win and win. And I bet rarely you're going to lose the World Cup unless you make some stupid mistakes or get unlucky. But like I said, I didn't see too much difficulty um, winning the World Cup again, even on my second playthrough. So I did want to quickly correct myself as I was playing some of this game again as I was finishing up my review, and I did put it on some higher difficulties, and there is a significant difference in the difficulty jump between even normal and hard, and then there's like an all-star pro player mode, which I didn't even try because hard was actually a lot darn harder than the main 
game itself. So it's up to you. Maybe you want to play through it and maybe there's a little bit more difficulty there than I was initially giving the team credit for. So uh, give it some thought, maybe play around with it that way. For me though, I didn't have enough interest in continuing on that hard mode uh, to get good at it. So look, let's talk about the positives and negatives. I think you're kind of getting a feel for what my perception is on the game. So let's start with the positives first. One, look, it's easy to pick up and master. Two of the games are short. You can leave and come back. I think that's a positive. The controls are simple. And it's a different take on football or soccer, whichever your preference is on how you say that. At least they thought outside of the box. Unfortunately for me, I think there's a lot of negatives. First, for me, it's just too easy. It's easy to master. I got runner-up my first time through. I won the second time through. Again, without really any trouble. Tackles get really frustrating. It's it gets really easy to sit there and learn how to slam into somebody and steal the ball. Uh, you can juke people pretty decently. The tackles within the box get rather frustrating again when those defenders slide from halfway across the box and take you out and perfectly timed every time. Um, I think the goalies are an absolute mess. I would say that I wish there were more countries involved, but again, I know this is a small team trying their best. And finally, I'd say how high is that replayability? And I, I personally don't think it's extremely that high, but maybe it's because I've evolved past these old style, you know, basic sports games. And you're talking to somebody, maybe I should have prefaced that previously. I grew up being a massive sports fan, playing tons of sports games. So I grew up and evolved along with games for, for me to go back and play these at such a simplified level. Um, you know, I would rather go play dodgeball on the NES, Super Dodgeball, I believe it was called. You know, I, I would go and play NHL 94. I would rather play those games with simplified mechanics than to choose this one, unfortunately. So with that said, for $5 traditionally or on sale for $2.50, is it worth that? I would say for $2.50, probably, right? And even... Even for $5, look, you guys know that's the cost of a fast food sandwich now. So... Maybe a few hours here and there. Maybe you pick it up from time to time. For you, is that does that work? Maybe that's a yes. But for me, I don't really see myself jumping back in. I would love to have a more in-depth game like Football Manager or FIFA, right? That's but you pay a lot more for those games. You're not paying two fifty or five dollars. You know, you're paying forty to sixty. Uh, so I, I do understand that. So finally, I'm also going to give this score a 5 out of 10, and I want to say this really quickly. I completely respect the effort and the passion of the developer here. And when I say a 5 out of 10, I am not saying that this is a you know junk game. I'm saying for me, my expectations for sports games are a little bit higher than you know maybe some other games. Um, for me, if you're a 1 or a 2, you're absolute trash. It should never be around. If you're a 3 or a 4, I wouldn't pick it up. If you're a five or a six, it means to me it's a very, very average game. I can see what they're doing here or trying to do here. It just wasn't a good fit for me. If we get up into the sevens and eights, specifically seven, pick it up. Eight, you really got to play this. Nine, my goodness, you better pick this up and play it. And if somebody ever hits a 10, you're talking, you know, top 10, top 20, top 30 game of all time that you've ever played. And then that's the way I kind of go through my, my scale. So... As I continue to do these, these reviews, I hope to develop and tighten up some of my scores a little bit better to really help guide you. So a five for me is not trying to insult them. It just means to me this is a very average game. I do want to say a quick thank you to Properly Decent for the free Steam copy. I wish them the absolute best in their future efforts. You can tell that they have a passion for games and for football in general. And this one for me, again, with my brain and my sports background, it just didn't hit the nail on the head. So for that, I'm going to move along, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe, and hit that bell for future notifications. And comment below if you think I'm completely off base here. Maybe you love Ballsy World Cup 2020, and I don't blame you if you do. But for the rest of you, I will see you in the next video. Take care and be safe.